ora, I'm Philip Duncan from ruralweather.co.nz with your climate watch update for the month of November. Let's get into the forecast. We have got high pressure to the north of New Zealand. On this map, anything that is yellow or white shading shows high pressure. The darker shading, that is low pressure, and that is a storm directly south of New Zealand with air pressure down to 940, 950 hectopascals. So that's quite a major storm system. It is a long way south of New Zealand, but it does kind of highlight the weather pattern we've been seeing over winter and into spring. A lot of major storms down here over the Southern Ocean, which is hugging Antarctica. And these major storms have been keeping those big windy westerlies going through across places like Tasmania, Victoria, and over towards New Zealand, especially the South Island of New Zealand, but also going into the North Island as well. Up in the tropics, we are seeing the usual wet weather forming. November kicks off the tropical cyclone season for the South Pacific. Uh, and of course, there is still that chatter about La Nina, which we're gonna talk about in a moment because it is still not looking like much. As we said, I think back in March, to not really focus on it this year while everyone else was, it is still not much happening, there's still not much going on. But in saying that, there could still be potentially a La Nina declared over the next couple of months. But even if it is, the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia is not expecting it to be very much, which means for us in New Zealand, it may not even influence our weather really at all. So we'll keep an eye on it because you can't ignore that there are some signs of it forming, but at the same time, the storms down here in the Southern Ocean, they are absolutely dominating our weather around New Zealand. And that looks to be the way for the next couple of weeks, as you're going to see in a moment. So the Bureau of Meteorology, we are still in a neutral season at the moment, but it's just leaning a little bit more towards that La Nina watch. But it's not into the alert, which means it's about to happen. And it's certainly not officially into La Nina. So we're pretty much in that middle part where we've been since about March of this year. So when you look at the model of all models, it was predicting uh, pretty much by September, October, about now that we would be uh, going into that zone. And as we go through and towards November, as in fact, that's where we are now, obviously, uh, it's going back up again. Now this can move up and down a wee bit, so I wouldn't be too focused on it. But generally speaking, the gray line in the middle is completely neutral, but anywhere between the dotted red line and the dotted blue line, that is neutral. El Nino is up here. La Nina is down here. Uh, it's a bit hard to read because I'm standing in front of the, the, the words. But this is the neutral zone that we're in. So yes, it's going down towards La Nina. But at the same time, going into summer of next year, more of these lines look to be going up into El Nino, which means for our part of the world in New Zealand and Australia, there may not be a massive change to the weather pattern that we've already been seeing for the last couple of months. These are the international model of all models. Up here is the Pacific Ocean, down here is the Indian Ocean. You can see we're in that neutral zone, sort of just close to La Nina. And as we go into January, perhaps the closest of all the different modeling putting it together. So that's putting it into next year. Then we come into March and it's back out towards neutral. The Bureau of Meteorology has already addressed this, that you don't normally declare a La Nina for a few weeks. It's, it's something that's around for a few months. So th if this is only showing perhaps one month or so where it's into that zone, and even technically not into it, that's the reason why you may not hear much more about it happening. Now our weather pattern in New Zealand, as I say, is still being dominated by the Southern Ocean. Sometimes storms from the Indian Ocean drop down, bring us rain into New Zealand. Uh, at the moment, the Indian o Ocean Dipole which is the Indian Ocean's version of El Nino and La Nina, is also pretty much in neutral. So what I take from that is nothing major changing to our weather pattern that we've had for the last few months. All right, let's get into the forecast to try and make sense of where the highs and the lows are going to be because that drives all of our weather. So with La Nina, you'll be expecting to see a lot of low pressure up here. Now, certainly this top part of the screen, generally speaking, is low pressure. You're going up well north of Fiji and Samoa up here. So low pressure is likely to be up there as it usually is at this time of the year. But until we break away from these high pressure zones north of New Zealand and off the eastern sides of Queensland and New South Wales, we may not see too much of the wet weather up here coming down our way. In fact, this setup, the red lines, the red boxes along here, all high pressure, puts a bit of a lid on the Southern Ocean storms, and that makes for windier westerlies coming in around New Zealand, and it keeps any lows and storms up here north 
of those high pressure zones. So at the moment, this is like a protective layer uh, between New Zealand and the tropics. So even if anything is forming up there, it's got a, a, a tough journey to try and get itself southwards. So we're still seeing a lot of low pressure in the Southern Ocean and south of New Zealand and Australia. That will be fueling more westerly winds as we have here on the first day of November. So let's move on because that's obviously for tomorrow Friday. As we carry on into the following Friday, November the 7th, this is the setup. Again, high pressure right over the top of New Zealand and to the north of us, stopping any tropical energy up here from dropping down our way. There's a little bit over here further to the north of Australia and a bit over the northern half of Australia. But again, nothing too major in there just yet. So week one, week two look fairly similar, maybe some calm weather coming through for a time with that high pressure zone. And then we jump out to the middle of the month and take a look at the setup for the middle of the month. And that kind of tells us what's happening over here. It'll slowly move over towards us. Again, no great changes here. We are not seeing loads of low pressure north of New Zealand. We're not seeing loads of tropical storms. Uh, and the high pressure zones look bigger in this map than they did in the previous one. Uh, pretty hot nor'west is coming through. Obviously, this is not a weather forecast. You can't lock in a map 15 days out like this. But what it does tend to show you is where the highs and lows are going to be because they're likely to still be there in a couple of weeks. Maybe not exactly as these maps show you, but they will generally be the high pressure zones along the northern part and the low pressure zones to the south. We are still seeing some low pressure around Australia that will spark thunderstorms and convergence and showers around Australia, but perhaps New Zealand not getting caught up in that so much. So we may start to see some large parts of New Zealand drying out. Uh, of course, this only shows us up until about the middle part of the month of November. Beyond that, we may start to see more life up here in the tropics because as we go into summer, that is more likely. Here is the sea surface temperature anomaly map. In other words, where it's red, that is much warmer than usual for this time of the year, and blue shows it cooler. So with La Nina, you see blue here around the equator and usually red over on this side, but it's not looking very red. It is up here well to the north around uh, Japan, the Aleutian Islands, South Korea, those areas all seeing that warmer than average, much warmer than average sea surface conditions. So there's a, at the time of recording this, a typhoon coming in towards Taiwan as it moves past Japan, goes into those hot, warmer than usual waters. Shouldn't say hot, because they're not, but warmer than usual waters. Down around New Zealand, you can see blobs that are warmer than usual, but the white shading is normal temperatures for this time of the year at sea on the surface. So yes, some areas are warmer, some areas are about average. What we are not really seeing a lot of is the blue. Not a lot of cooler than average sea conditions, but we do see some of that to our north, which means as lows form, they may not be triggered quite as much to be as severe. So there's some positives uh, if you don't want to get a storm. All right, this is the sea surface temperature map locally here around New Zealand. So you can certainly see the mixture of warmer than average, only by a degree or two for most places. It's not up into that excessive heat wave area. And a lot of white as well, which is about normal for this time of the year. But at a glance, it does look average to warmer than average. This makes it a little bit clearer to understand where the actual marine heat waves are. There aren't technically any, but we do see here uh, perhaps a little spot of it around Marlborough that could be a, classed as a strong marine heat wave. Elsewhere in the yellow, you're into the moderate zones. Green uh, shows none. So places are pretty much average for this time of the year. I think about a year ago, it was looking a lot worse than this map is currently showing. Here's the 15 day rainfall for you. Now the pale blue, which takes up a big portion of this map all around here, all coming into the North Island, the blues that you see there, bottom of the scale. So any blue that's got green and yellow next to it, that's not going to be very much in the way of rain. So this shows again, not a lot of life coming through from the tropics. Most of our energy, at least for the first half of the month, is still coming out of the Southern Ocean area and coming into the West Coast, the southwest, the south, although not maybe as much around Southland and Otago as you've been getting. Fingers crossed, because I know you're well and truly over it, but unfortunately over on the west coast, still plenty more rain. The darker blue will uh, actually cut off the scale here, but you see in this zone, 
when the blue is around the purple, that's 200 millimeters or 300 millimeters coming through for, for you in that one area just over there. Otherwise, most of the map here shows a large portion of the North Island, Marlborough, Canterbury, not seeing massive amounts of rain over the next 15 days. Here's just a, a, a closer view of all of that. The heaviest rain over here on the west coast, this does show the extended key. So you can see you've got that 100 to 300 millimeters. We sometimes clip that off, the last part of the blue, because people find it confusing that there are two sets of blue at each end of the scale. That's uh, a part of the way they do the keys globally, because there are so many segments of weather that we cut up. So they use blue at the very beginning and again at the very end. You can write your letters of complaints about it. It's not going to change anything. That's the way it is globally. But the heaviest rain is where it should be, Fiordland, which is a rainforest. And when you take a look at the big picture, where is all the tropical heavy rain, the talks of La Nina? This is the sign here. This is all the wet weather up here with the purples and the darker blues. So that's north of Fiji, mostly around Samoa, where they could be getting a couple of hundred millimeters. But this pale blue with the greens around it, bottom of the scale stuff, all that high pressure in between the heavy rain up in the tropics and the heavy rain coming out of the Southern Ocean area as westerlies. So there may still be a few more weeks to go before we start to see any changes, if we see any at all. I said a couple of months ago that I thought this spring would be an extended one because of the big storms down around the Southern Ocean. And that is certainly fueling the rain that we've been seeing. And a lot of that rain is over the South Island. It's not so much over the top of the country. And that is why we're now starting to see Hawke's Bay really jumping out on the soil moisture maps here from the National Institute, Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research. The heaviest rain has been uh, in the top of the South Island and also the southern half of the South Island, including the West Coast. Not everybody is wetter than they should be for this time of the year. We're still seeing parts of Canterbury that are drier than average, but it is this eastern side of the North Island where those windy nor'westers are quite hot at times blowing through and that's pushing your temperatures up, it's stripping the moisture from it, and with highs coming through and more westerlies coming through, I don't expect this map to get any better, in fact, for the North Island. I think we're going to start to see more and more of the yellows and the oranges and the reds starting to show up. In the South Island, it may start to go the other way around, um, or at least the, what I mean there is the blues shift more over to the western side and eastern areas start to go further down to that drier scale. But for now, the South Island, has got plenty of capacity to deal with some longer dry spells coming up. The North Island does not, especially if you're needing pasture growth. This is not a map that you really want to be seeing uh, as we are still another month or so away from the start of summer. But we'll keep an eye on it. You never know. In New Zealand, the silver lining I always give is you can just get a wild card from any direction. We're such a small nation with mountains. It only takes one low to sort of get stuck over us and suddenly you get a month or two of rain just falling and all your problems go away. All your problems get worse depending on your situation. All right, that is all from me with this Climate Watch update for November. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back again in a month for our final one of the year. And uh, we look forward to updating you then about what is happening up in the tropics with La Nina. Is it going to happen? Or are we, as I suspect, still just dealing with the weather flows coming out of the Southern Ocean and locally around New Zealand? Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next time.